the Catholic Church has the ability to instruct us, and it does so with authority. The Catholic Church teaches in the name of Jesus, guided by the power of the Holy Spirit, and in the glory of God the Father. It has the capacity to declare what is true and what is not, as well as to establish doctrine. I'm not referring to some abstract, universal body of believers. I'm referring to the church that Jesus himself established, as documented in Matthew chapter 16. In that passage, Jesus said to Simon, You are now Peter, the rock, and on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. He went on to say, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Now, here's an interesting fact you may or may not be aware of. Jesus came to establish his kingdom, but it's not an invisible kingdom. Why? Because we can look at Jesus as the king, establishing his kingdom. When he says to Peter, formerly known as Simon, I give you the keys to the kingdom, etc. He is referencing Isaiah, the book of the prophet Isaiah. In Isaiah, there is a role within the kingdom, a prime minister, an overseer. When the king is absent, this person assumes authority, acting on behalf of the king. You can find this in Isaiah chapter 22. It closely parallels what Jesus conferred upon Peter, the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Jesus provided the church with a visible structure and a genuine hierarchy. He said, You can now teach in my name, and the Holy Spirit will guide you to all truth. And that's precisely what occurred. In the book of Acts, chapter 15, a major crisis arose. The apostles had been spreading the gospel among the Jews, who were all Jews themselves. They recognized that Jesus was the fulfillment of Judaism, the long-awaited Messiah. So, they joyfully shared the good news with their fellow Jews. However, a revelation came to Peter, and Paul was also called to this mission, to bring the gospel to non-Jews. This was a significant development because I, like many others, am not Jewish, and I had the privilege of being included in the people of God. An important question arose, when evangelizing Jews, all they needed was baptism since they were already circumcised, part of the Old Covenant. However, when evangelizing Gentiles, a question emerged, did they need to be circumcised first and then baptized, or could they simply be baptized? There are at least two reasons why this question was crucial. First, for an adult Gentile man, this was a significant issue he needed clarity on. Secondly, and even more importantly, if circumcision was a prerequisite for baptism, then failure to do so meant one wasn't saved. In essence, the question was, do we need to do this to be saved? This dilemma highlights the issue with a doctrine known as sola scriptura or Bible alone. One of the cornerstones of the Reformation was the belief that Bible alone suffices, that one doesn't need the church, only the Bible. But what happens when the Bible doesn't provide clear guidance on a matter? In Acts chapter 15, the apostles gathered, again, not as some loosely connected, invisible church, but as the actual structure of the church. These apostles, appointed by Jesus himself, including Peter as the Pope, Paul, and Barnabas, represented the body of the church. The church convened, deliberated, prayed, and ultimately decided. They declared, It seems good to the Holy Spirit and to us that we should not burden the Gentiles with circumcision as a requirement for baptism. At that moment, it became evident that the church, the visible church with its structured governance, possessed the authority to teach, not merely as an option, but definitively. This was not an isolated incident. Throughout history, the church has repeatedly exercised this authority. People would read the Old Testament and the New Testament scriptures, which were given to us by the church, and form divergent beliefs. For example, some claimed, Jesus isn't fully God, he only appeared human. This was known as Docetism, one of the earliest heresies. The church, again, not some vague, invisible entity but the actual, physical structure and hierarchy of the church, declared this belief incorrect. Others argued that Jesus was fully human but only partly divine, like the Arians. In response, the church convened the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD and proclaimed that Jesus is fully God and fully human, with two natures, 
divine and human, in one divine person. Today, every Christian worldwide believes in this doctrine, primarily because of the authority of the Catholic Church. It was the Church that gathered at the councils of Nicaea and Constantinople, as well as other Church councils, and declared this interpretation of the text. We need this authoritative guidance because without it, well, consider this, if you were God, and it was essential for humanity to know who you truly are, what would you do? You wouldn't overwhelm them with your power and glory, for fear that they'd serve you out of fear. You'd want them to fall in love with you and grasp your true essence. You'd start small, with individuals like Abraham, formerly Abram, and gradually reveal yourself to his family, tribe, and the Jewish people whom you've chosen as your own. Then, in the fullness of time, you'd become a human being yourself, showing humanity who you truly are. You wouldn't do it as the most powerful, richest, or greatest, you'd take on the humblest role, living as a poor person, even dying as a criminal, subjected to suffering and death to ensure that people understand the depth of your heart. After your resurrection, you'd send your Holy Spirit to the Apostles, and they would write down your teachings. As they do, you'd ensure the preservation of these teachings because it's vital that they write down exactly what you want them to, no more and no less. This is why the Bible is considered infallible, an error-free book, though not necessarily in scientific matters, as it's not a scientific text. The Bible is a collection of poetry, truth, and goodness. The point is that you'd compile this infallible book through fallible people. But if you were God, would it make sense to hand this infallible book to anyone and say, here it is, read it and interpret it as you please? No, it wouldn't. Why? Because an infallible book, without an infallible interpreter, is of little value. This is one of the reasons why there are over 30,000 denominations of Christianity in the United States. People pick up the Bible and interpret it according to their own understanding. That's why G. K. Chesterton, a Catholic, once said, I don't need a church that can tell me when I'm right, I need a church that will tell me where I'm wrong. So, if you're wondering, what's the major difference between the Catholic Church and all other non-Catholic Christian denominations? I'd say it boils down to one word, authority. From all of us here at Ascension Presence, God bless.